even a nutritionally based sort of race. And and I don't want to like get into like the terrible, scary parts of all that, but there, there, it, it does seem to me, right. That you can walk around and the, the people that are, and I think we can call them victims. I think they are right. Like mid, middle, mid America working hard, no time for research, feeding their kids what they can get their hands on at the local thing. And the whole family's obese, right? Like I feel bad for them. That is going to be replicated and compounded. And eventually we're just going to have sort of like a biological drift. Do you, do you see that? Or do you feel that? Am I, am I thinking crazy that the, the class divide in America is, is at least manifested nutritionally and then in, in its health or perhaps even driven by it? Well, absolutely. I, I don't think that's crazy. It, it's, it's something that makes people sometimes uncomfortable, especially the people in power that don't really want you to know that. They get really uncomfortable. And then they start, actually, I've been attacked, right? Like, uh, you know, people have called me like uh, even a Nazi because <laughs> I want to help people know what to eat to have healthy babies. Right. right. I mean, that is a crazy idea that that makes I mean, if you think that's what Nazism is, I think you need to go study history because right. they killed people uh, uh, that were, you know, Jewish or whatever they discerned to be like degenerate. Go back and read your history because you don't know what you're talking about. What I'm trying to do is just get us to what where everyone was. 100 years ago, there's some really great stories I learned doing the research for deep nutrition about um, like grandmothers in Africa who were very upset when missions would come to their town because they knew that really the only way to have a healthy baby was to feed them right. Uh, but, you know, that's more work than going to the mission store and eating junk. But their daughters, we're having babies that just their the attitude was well if they get sick I'll just take them to the mission you know hospital and they'll take some antibiotics and the grandparents were really upset with that they were like this is not good this is this can't end well and you know so it's not a new idea what I'm saying and it's not controversial I think I mean it is controversial in our very squeamish and weird society it's controversial but it shouldn't be I mean that's part of the problem that's part of like to to make that kind of discussion to put, throw shade on that sort of basic survivalist discussion is bad. That is wrong. Don't do that. We should be elevating this discussion, not trying to suppress it. And it's basic. It's common sense. If you don't feed your children right, it's not going to be as good as if you do. How can that be controversial? So stupid. So you are not, I don't think you're reading into it in a wrong way. I think, I think you're a hundred percent. We are down this road already with, with, um, different classes like when you said nutrition classes i thought you were talking about people should take nutrition classes <laughs> then i realized oh you're talking about socioeconomic yeah oh, oh good good topic <laughs> <laughs> although I, I would love to teach nutrition classes. um the um yes we're there i mean there's this thing called the social determinants of health right mm. have you heard that phrase mm -mm. i like it it's, it's kind of a lefty phrase um mm. and uh you know <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's a phrase. Uh, the, what they're doing is they're saying that there's something um, about your socioeconomic level that limits your health, right? That's mm -hmm. an entryway into this very important conversation. Sure. And what they're saying is like, um, it's, it's stuff like, um, uh, well, what they are saying also is what, it's what you eat. And if you've heard the, ter the term food desert before, it comes out of these conversations around people who live in a food desert, which means like your best grocery store is like the dollar store or a 7-Eleven. Like there's no fresh food anywhere within miles. You can't get fresh meat um, or fresh vegetables. And that's a food desert. And they know that people who live in food deserts are destined to be more overweight, have more diabetes, have more mental health disorders, have more difficulty getting a job, finishing, you know, college. Crime. It's not genetic, right? They're not saying it's genetic. 
Yeah. But the doctors are. The doctors are saying it's genetic. The doctors are saying that African Americans are just more prone to type two diabetes and obesity and hypertension. That, if you ask me, is racist. But right. uh, I don't want to use that word. Sorry, I don't want to get you canceled. Um, but but no, I mean I'm serious. That like that is so short sighted. Um, there that if people are living in a lower socioeconomic um, environment and they don't have access to good food, they won't be as healthy. That's like so basic. Um, so it's not at all controversial. I mean, it's not at all like, uh, it's not taboo if you talk about it with the right words, right? right. If you talk about it in the, in the, with those terms, then you can talk about it. <laughs> so that's, um, that's why I learned those terms. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> 